If this really works, then what I will be doing is putting production scale blocks of willow in my grazing fields. And that will become part of the farming operation that we're delivering here. Willow is high in cobalt and it's something that a lot of the soils in the UK are deficient in, which means a lot of the forage is deficient in, so a lot of the lambs are deficient in it. We have in the past been diagnosed with a sort of cobalt deficiency maybe 20 or so years ago. The coats aren't as white and bright as what they should be. The sort of faces go dull and obviously they don't thrive as well, you know, get uh, fat and before we realised we had it, you know, having to pump more and more feeding them just to get them built up. Cobalt deficiency is one of the more common deficiencies in sheep, especially growing lambs, because they're growing, which has a requirement for the vitamin B12, which the cobalt produces. One of the things that we noticed was that the sheep were deliberately using willow when they had access to it. So we did an exploratory project last year, just on our own with the vet, got enough of a significant uh, indication to then bring in the steely-eyed professionals. Done a couple of trials previously, but we've done one with willow where we fed them every day on willow. The blood responses over that two-week period we had were really quite spectacular. The control group, they were around 400, which is just really the low end of where I'd really want the, the sheep to be. For the willow fed group, we were up at about 1400, 1600, which is a lot higher than we need to be, but we were daily feeding, hence one of the reasons I think we can get away with weekly feeding now. The overall concept is to take a good sized group of 200 sheep, split them in half, half of them will be fed willow on a weekly basis, half of them won't. And at the end of the day, we'll look at the weights, we'll look at the blood samples, and we'll see if there's a difference. Having willow as your option for your cobalt supplement means that you have to handle your lambs less, so it takes quite a lot of time to bring all of your lambs through a race. It also causes a certain amount of stress, and it's time that they're not eating grass. Integrating trees like willow into your farming system can provide benefits for the livestock in terms of shelter and shade. They can also help protect the structure of the soil. Trees on a hillside will slow the flow of the water down the hillside. So for your grasses and things, you're likely to get a better forage from having trees. There's also a big biodiversity benefit. It can create wildlife corridors, which can be really important for that biodiversity and the different animals involved in the farm. The way that the willow fits into the wider agroforestry plan is it becomes part of the complexity of the place. 5,000 years ago, this ground would have been covered in thorny scrub. Uh, that was doing a job. It's nutrient cycling, it's shelter, it's soil conditioning. Here specifically, willow and other things, it's browsing. We've got focused on grazing for probably 2,000 years. We've forgotten about browsing where there are trees, the livestock and the wildlife use them. And that's not by accident. One of the exciting things about this field lab is how easy it is that we could potentially incorporate willow into the farming setting. Willow grows very quickly, so you've not got a long lead in like you do with a lot of trees. So adding willow into either open blocks that they can graze in a traditional agroforestry system or into hedgerows could be very easy in a difficult year, if your margins are compressed, then suddenly this might make the difference between being profitable and, and being loss-making. So rather than spending two to four pounds a lamb on this artificial vitamin additive, we can use what's already growing on the ground and have it clean. So it would seem to be a no-brainer. The first three steps of the scientific method are observation, questioning, and hypothesis. And this is what every farmer does every day, all day. In this farm is really important because it gives the farmers an opportunity to really explore the issues that are on their minds. Basically all of the research is farmer-led. The opportunities for farmers to really test out things that they're thinking about that are affecting them day to day is a really powerful tool. Knowledge exchange doesn't just go one way, it goes both ways. And it's really important that so the discussion groups work and then moving even to doing this field trial. Working with the Innovate Farmers has allowed us to develop this field lab into something we're gonna do practically to get that data to do it. You know, I've got confidence that we're gonna do it and then move it out further in the future that we can do it on more farms. 
The lovely thing about Innovative Farmers is it brings people together and it's bringing contacts, it's bringing academics, it's bringing NGOs together, it's bringing farmers together and different farmers. We're actually at the end of the valley here and so everything that we do, everybody down the valley can see. There's a lot of people watching it and that's really exciting.